moving right along. What up, Jabe? Yeah, how many episodes have we done? I think we've done 30. I don't know. I think we have. It's like 30, 30 something. I'll have to look. Total. That's awesome. I'm but, pretty sure that we've been over a year now. Yeah. The key is like people need to understand that we're going in steps. Yeah, we're going in a chronological it's like, order. It's like, it's like we're, we're walking you up these spiritual steps. Yes. We're going up Jacob's ladder. Jacob's ladder. That's <laughs> fantastic. That's the image of the cosmos. We always exactly. always have to go up and, and transform and then go up and transform. I fall back down. <laughs> yes, exactly. It's like the shoots and ladder game. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It really is. I fall down a slide and then I have to go back up. It's crazy. One of the psychologists that we like a lot, he says that uh, that's a very powerful image of the cosmos or even you know we can get into a little bit of uh, christian theology real quick just the death and resurrection and the willingness to do so Mm. you know i love doing this podcast with you bro because there's a a a push and a willingness that we each have to grow spiritually yes and in order to do that i have to recognize where i'm lacking Mm, i have to give my i have to really be willing to look at myself honestly and uh, realize I'm not King Dwayne, that I don't have this figured out. I still have a lot of flaws, a lot of judgment, a lot of areas to improve on. And um, that's that's that spiritual death. That's that spiritual resurrection. I see this part of me, this old part of me that needs to burn off and die. And that's the same thing as the willingness to shoulder your cross and and, and carry it. And yeah, it's almost, like, it. it's almost like when you watch those meme videos on Instagram or whatever of Karen's. Yeah. You know, and if your name's Karen, I feel bad for you from all this, but whatever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you could change your name. You can call yourself Quran or something, you know, make the it Quran. like, yeah, make it like <laughs> Arabic or something. Cool. But uh, it's, it, you know, like when you watch this person basically like short circuiting and malfunctioning, yes. I always picture like a robot just going, you know, it, that's basically what's happening it's in very that accurate. moment. Yeah. You know, they're at the, it's usually at a coffee shop or something like that. They're not, getting their way and you've dealt with this a lot in, in customer service side of things it's at that point that there's a decision that has to be made mm-hmm. for yourself and what you just said i think it's so important because whenever i'm in like king jason mode then i'm automatically judging everything around me to be the way that i think it should be instead of the way that I, I'm being of service and helping somebody else. So there's no self-reflection. Mm-mm, zero. In, in that moment. And I think the king is a good word, or queen, or whatever. or being a, You know, it's like me just being a Karen in my relationships. I, I yes. shared that with you the other day. I went off on, you know, been a long time, and then finally something just got in my crawl, and then I just let King Jason pop out. And then I was being like uh, Joffrey on <laughs> Game of Thrones. Executing. Just being an asshole. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah. No, I, I understand completely. that. And we talked about this. You know, that's the spirit of Cain inside of me. Mm-hmm. That's the thing inside of me that wants to dominate. And if I don't keep that in check with constant introspection, with constant self-analysis, with constant willingness to improve and grow and be the best possible human I can be, mm-hmm. Um you know, what's the opposite of that? So I haven't done any of that work. I'm just going, I'm spiraling down yes. this rabbit hole of that, what you mean when you say, you know, a Karen, and it's like the thoughts and the anger and the judgment inside my head get so loud. It's no longer just inside my head. Like mm. I'm yelling at the postman because of my package not being delivered. And don't you know who I am? Yeah, and I think it's important, like, for people to understand it in their addiction as addicts. So that I'm going to be like macro and generic, and 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 you have somebody that you know that races cars. Mm-hmm. They race like old vintage cars and stuff like that, like, and super cool. I'm I I was watching a show the other day, and they were in like a McLaren dealership, and there was like Lamborghini next to it, and so they were talking about the cars. And I thought about this while I was watching this. I was like, addicts are just made different. <laughs> there's all different there's some people that are toyotas there's some people that are hondas and i don't mean to be like ego but i think addicts are made addicts are lamborghinis they're mclarens they're these high revving mm. can get shit done type entrepreneurs that's that's the the shadow side is the attic part yes 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 you I, know the as below but the as above is like i can fucking do anything you mean to cr- conquer that wall Give me an ice pick, and I can chip away that concrete. That's a great analogy. 
And so what happens with that friend of yours, what does he constantly have to do with these race cars? Tune them. Tune them, maintain them, change the tires, change the oil, fix the fenders. It, it takes constant yes, maintenance constant to work. keep that thing revving and keep it going. The problem we as addicts do is we don't want to do the daily maintenance. We don't want to do the self-reflection. We don't want to take the time. And that's what we're getting into today, right? Correct, yeah. And then my, my Lamborghini turns into a jalopy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm running on like four cylinders. And I'm wondering why I can't make it to work on time. Right. Yes. Yeah. So th this is what I want to talk about. And, and I want you to kind of lead off in this. These daily practices, the importance of 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 looking, say, yes, I'm a I'm a freaking Lamborghini. And in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, I need these special like I've got a Normal people's spark plugs get changed every year. Mine get changed every month. <laughs> it's just how I rev. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah, you're so high performing. That's a, It's an excellent analogy. Us as addicts are so, you know, we talk about all the time, we have thousands and thousands of thoughts a day. Mm -hmm. And there's a high probability that a lot of those are negative and repetitive. So what we're getting into here in regards to the daily self-reflection self in order to maintain my spiritual growth. Mm. Like, why am I, okay, why? Why do you want me to, every day I got to do this? Why the hell would I be willing to do that? It was like, well, because, you know, this is Recovered Addict Podcast. I have been taught and have learned from practical experience that if I don't continue to grow spiritually, I will return to the addiction. Mm. Yes. Basically, I have a daily requirement, challenge, in order to touch into source, which gives me a daily reprieve mm. from That's the so addiction. Good. You know, we like to say you can't stay sober today on yesterday's recovery. <laughs> like I got to do work today in order to maintain my spiritual state. And but um, I think it's just the way God made us as Lamborghinis. I mean, it's just it just requires daily maintenance. Absolutely, we just require more maintenance. <laughs> Only since birth. <laughs> yeah. I've always been needy. I've always been needy. But now we're starting to redirect that neediness or that mm -hmm. maintenance in the right way. Let's say I want to get in line with the power that creates worlds. Mm -hmm. That's the right type of maintenance. Like, I want to be successful. I want to be of service. I want to be helpful. I want to be um, growing and evolving and, and and financially independent. Like those are the right type of directions. Those are the right type of decisions. That's alchemizing thoughts. the addiction. Yes, to be maintained. It's important to say too that, you know, we're 30 episodes in and over a year of work in. So this isn't like beginner uh, 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 recovery information or, 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 or ideas here. Like you've done some serious work in order to get to this point stage yes, in your yes. recovery. And now I want to not slip back down into my old behaviors. So this is about rewiring the brain, creating new habits that promote spiritual growth. Because if I don't do that, I'm going to return to the drink. I'm going to return to the drug. I'm going to return to the sugar. Yeah. Because it, because for like for me in particular, I know the minute a thing goes bad and I have that trigger, if I haven't done my spiritual daily practices... Mm -hmm. Like you do every morning when you get up, I, I do different practices, mm -hmm. the same thing. The minute I get a trigger is the minute. And I can tell because it's so simple. Like I have a food addiction. The other day I told you I went into, got in an argument, which is rare. Like we have a really good relationship because we're both spiritual and we have conversations and stuff. But this, I turned into Jason King asshole. I ended up dropping off at her house, my girlfriend. Where did I go instantly? I went and got an Oreo shake. Mm. Within, I didn't even think about it. I didn't think like, oh, you shouldn't do that. I just like was on, I'm having trauma and this is like fucked up. I, without even second thought. Yes. I yes. ordered it and did everything and ate it and not one minute that I have any type of self-awareness in that moment. That's very powerful. Isn't that interesting? That's very powerful. Our addiction, There was no like, I probably shouldn't yes. do this. It was straight up, I'm doing this. Our addiction, since we're Lamborghinis. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, my addiction comes for me when I'm, where I'm vulnerable mm. and where I'm vulnerable, what it means to be vulnerable means I don't have any defense in that moment. <laughs> right. Yes. So what we're talking about today is improving the strategy, improving right. the um, probability mm -hmm. of having a defense in place 
when life starts to get a little crazy. That's that's cool but, because it's such a great analogy because I'm not an F-250 truck. No. I'm a Lamborghini. There's yeah. no defense. I just go, go, go. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And <laughs> I'll run myself into the ground yes. if I don't maintain my engine. And uh, you nailed it, bro, with the, okay, well, what does it look like? Let's get specific now. In the morning, mm. I'm coming out of sleep. I just touch source. I want to have a practice upon awakening. Mm-hmm. So I, I just came out of source, uh, the realm of abundance, call it what you want. I'm not too well versed with the, or, or well studied with the dream world. Right. Um, but many people believe, and so do I, that when we go into deep dreamless sleep, we're touching source. We're touching yes. where we came from. And um, <clears throat> Joe Dispenza is a great uh, uh, reference and tool to use in regards to brain waves and studying the brain at, what, at certain levels of consciousness. So that deep sleep, we can get into some really high brain waves that are easy to, it's easy to receive. Like theta waves, stuff yes, like that. Yeah. Gamma, theta, delta. Um, so upon awakening, I get on a stationary bike and I put meditation in my ears and I meditate while I exercise. So we, you know, we, we've talked about this a lot. I have a physical, spiritual practice. Boom. First thing in the morning. So I'm touching source. I'm getting my day lined up in regards to my spirituality First thing, I haven't had a, a fight with my three-year-old already. Right. So you're doing like a spiritual, physical practice right off. I the haven't gotten angry in traffic. Right. And then think, oh, you know what? I was supposed to uh, turn the day over to God and let me <laughs> let me reset. We can always <laughs> reset. It's no problem to recommit any time throughout the day. But upon awakening, I have that spiritual practice where I'm setting my intention for the day. I'm getting in touch with abundance. I'm getting in touch with the present moment. I'm getting in touch with my physicality, and That sets the tone, like I'm ready to go. If I have not said, God direct my thinking, I pray that it be divorced from self-pity, self-seeking, and dishonest motives, which is my routine, my daily prayer, so I have my meditation and my prayer. If I haven't said that, the day doesn't go so well. Mm -hmm. The day doesn't, it's not like, it's like King Dwayne comes out and everyone's in my way. Don't you know who I am? I'm taking the shoulder. Like, I'm I'm not (laughs) waiting in traffic, I'm taking the shoulder. I have no inner peace. Because I didn't get in line with the part of me that is peace. That's so awesome, bro. Do you feel like like there's a scripture in Lamentations, and I don't know it completely, but it's in the Old Testament in the Bible, and it, it talks about upon awakening, it says your like God's promises are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. That's what it says. The the verse, you know, and I, and this is something I want to talk about real quick. I kind of want to diverge just a little bit because I think this is really important for somebody that's. You just said something like reconnecting in the morning. Yeah. Because I feel, and I, I struggle with this sometimes, is I want to drag the bad week that I had into the next day. Yeah. Or I want to do the fuck it. Like the, the oh, fuck it for today, you know, like whatever. Like, I, you know, like I've had a bad three days, whatever. And then I just kind of waste the day away, you know, spiritually. I'm talking like a totally. spiritual practice or whatever. And then I get busy, I'll do work and everything. But I'm in the king mode a little bit. I'm trying to keep them like down, but I didn't do any spiritual practices because I don't understand in that moment the importance of it's a brand new day. Fuck the past. It's time to recommit. Yeah, yeah. The here and now. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, uh, we always say if I have one foot in yesterday and another foot in tomorrow, I shit all over today. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a good one. Yeah, it's like, I, yeah I, I, I like lose that. the present moment. Where's the only place that God can exist? Right here, right now. Yes. Where does all power generate from? Right here, right now. That's one of my mantras in the morning on the bike is thank you, God, for this moment. Thank mm, you, God, for right. this moment. It's not a specific number in my bank account. It's not... Uh, a, a, a loving partner. It's not the best job in the world. It's just, thank you, God, for this moment. Can I be grateful for this moment? The attitude of gratitude and presence, the combination of attitude of gratitude with presence, that's very powerful. That's a very powerful vibration. It actually invites more into my life. So the other areas, the bank account, the relationship, the job, those things can start to uh, resonate and come to me mm. at a higher vibration because, th- because th- well, this I'm is totally setting different. the tone first thing in the morning. You said invite to you. 
in my addiction, I don't want anything inviting or coming to me. No, no, no. no. I'm, I'm pushing. I'm propelling. I'm. Yeah. Everyone get I'm the like, fuck away from yes. me, and I'm gonna get what I want. So this is a total 180 degree switch, yes, where yes. I'm I'm wanting to be vulnerable. I'm oh, wanting yeah. to invite things into my life, yeah. where yeah. I'm like, fuck you, fuck that, get the fuck out of my way. Like this, uh, that contraction, yes. propel, pushing away. Mm-hmm. That's totally different. That's why we said this is not beginner level recovery. Well, even that's what addiction is. Like I want to escape the present moment. So I need this alcohol. I need this drugs. I need this food. I need this gambling because I don't want to face reality. Very well said. That's what it is. So I'm in the business now of no longer running away from the present moment. But you've even gone to the step farther of where you're inviting. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're inviting God in. You're inviting abundance <laughs> in. You're invite like your you, your doors open. Absolutely. So we want to take the path of least resistance. Let's say I have a high aim. Let's say I have a goal. I know my 2024 goals. We talked about this in a mm-hmm. past podcast where we, I get them down on paper. I'm really clear. clear. Yeah. I'm very clear on what I want and the goals that I want. Mm-hmm. How many? possible decisions are there that are going to, uh, uh, or how many possible scenarios are there that are going to help these goals manifest in my life? It's not a lot. Like it's not a lot of possible decisions or scenarios that are going to manifest these specific things. Like Mm -hmm. it's going to take specific decisions, specific energy, specific Mm -hmm. thoughts, uh, specific intentions and actions in order to manifest those specific things. Now, this is the counterintuitive piece. How many possible scenarios or thoughts are there that could interrupt those goals? Mm. It's infinite. It's fucking infinite. Now, do I want to get lost or even fight the infinite amount of scenarios and thoughts that could derail me? Mm -hmm. Or do I want to invite the few uh, deliberate, feel-good decisions and thoughts that align with my purpose, that align with my goals? Do you, do you, do you feel like, like, I'm reminded there's a book and I encourage everybody to read. It's called the 80, 20 principle Mm. by like Richard Koch or whatever. Absolutely. Yes. And it is reminding like what you were saying. It's like, if I'm inviting, because it's not just inviting, like you just said, it's it's the things that I'm doing, the thoughts that I'm thinking, the clarity that I have in the action of the day. I'm not going to allow my aunt, she triggers me, so she calls me at 8.30 in the morning, I'm not going to answer the phone call. Yeah, that's a disciplined action. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to get caught up in um, knowing that these two people are gossiping about the boss. And I'm at work and usually I go over there and I smoke cigarettes with them and we talk shit about everybody at work. But today I'm not going to do that. Mm. You know what I mean? It's that it's, it's like, what are 80% of the negative stupid shit that you're doing that you can eliminate out of your life? Yeah. Yeah. You know, because those, and then also he talks about like 20% of things that you do is actually is what propelling you. So it's really, if you really think about it, 20% of the things that we're doing in our life is what's really giving us that abundance. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And so if we could eliminate the 80% of the bullshit. Fuck. You know, that be, would be, be think about that. Yeah, you'd be, and just keep doing that filter over and over and over again. That's a Bugatti. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> we bumped up from Lamborghini yeah, to Bugatti, yeah. <laughs> I'll wear one of those yachts way, now. I've, yes, yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> well, you, you're, the, you're, the, you're not only a high-functioning vehicle, you're the, you're the, you're the appropriate king mm-hmm. Of your own reality. Yes, yes. Yes. It's not this, let me dominate you and you better do it my way because mm-hmm. 20%, motherfucker. It's, no, no. I, I'm clear on my goals. The other 80% is noise. Doesn't serve me. Like, does yeah. not serve me. Yes. Yeah. Can I turn the other cheek? Yes. Very powerful. If I do not have discipline practice in place, I'm not going to turn the other cheek. I'm going to fucking pay attention to the thing that's bugging me and I'm going to go after it. And I'm going to say, this should be different. Mm -hmm. This is the greatest, the second greatest lie of addiction is if only you were different, I would be okay. And I waste countless hours, countless amounts of energy trying to force my will and make things different than they Mm -hmm. are. They're just not. People are still unconscious. 
It's a low percentage. It's like 2% of the globe maybe is willing to do this type of work and transforms spiritually. So this honesty that we're going to have daily, you know, we've gone through the steps and a lot of it is, you know, climbing up that Jacob's ladder. A lot of it is and falling, like you said, and climbing back up and falling each of those steps that we take that honesty combined with an examination yes, and then yes, it yes. being really practical for the day and not just in like our thoughts, not just in the word, like even getting clear on the words that we speak. Yeah. Like I've been really noticing that. I was like, there's a, a good, like in the new Testament, there's a word that says it's called edify. I looked it up in the Greek and it's really cool. It's like, it's basically like bringing abundance to. So and in the, and the new Testament talks about using words that edify like that edify people and edify things. It's like, and we were talking about this off air, you know, with your family and stuff like that. It's like, I can, I have a choice to make in that moment. Am I, are my words going to be blessings? Remember when, when Abraham, you know, when they were talking, we were talking about in the old Testament, how, you know, the words that he spoke were blessed and then created a country from that. Yeah. You know, so he's like, he blessed his sons, you know, there was like, yeah, you'd be fathers of nations and not just, but God in his creation, when he create things, he, he used the logos, the words. Yes. You know, and you talk about this a lot, but I think it's really, really, really important is not just our thoughts, but then our words, the words that we say. As an addict, we have addictive language that's negative and bad and wrong. It's that, well, fuck, the, yeah, uh, it's, it's, and we got to clear that out. We got to have daily practices to, to learn a different language. That's awesome. The language yeah, of yeah, abundance. Yeah. That's, a, that's a very good point. I no longer get to uh, 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 be talking trash and slandering everyone mm -hmm. around me or, or even my coworkers or my family members uh, and expect to live a happy life. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't work. You can do it. You're like, go ahead and do it. It's just, a, <laughs> it's not the best strategy. It's a loser mentality. Yes, it's a, it's a, it's a losing strategy. So it's a, it's a hard thing to give up because I'm giving up having, having a, 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 an enemy. I'm giving mm, up. That's I'm, where it's at. I'm giving that's up, bro. I'm at. giving up having this. This person's against me. She's not doing it the way I need her to do. How many times have I complained to you at the gym about how she's not doing it the way I need her to do? Yes, yeah, the victim. Yeah, the and victim. So yeah. I'm literally giving up having a fight or having an enemy, mm -hmm. and that's a hard thing to give up. But if I'm in the business of least resistance, uh, we cease fighting everything and everyone. Yeah, my girlfriend was trying to help help this addict the other day, and was talking to her and my girlfriend came to me and she's like, it's just so crazy to see this. And this is so clear what you're saying. It was like a 30 minute conversation. The whole conversation was like, you don't believe what's happened to me. This person fucked me over. This did me. And I was trying to do this and then this. And then, the, and then at the end, my girlfriend said, who put themselves in that? All those situations. Very good. Yes. Very good. <laughs> yep. But you don't think that. No, but that happens with the introspection at the very least. I put myself there. So, because uh, I want to get really, really clear because this is badass, bro. So my thoughts, words, and actions. Every morning, I'm like, boom, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, today, I may fail. I may fall down the ladder of these steps that I'm working on to try to be a better human being for my spiritual growth. But these thoughts, words, and actions are all going to be based off of spiritual principles. Because yes. that's what we believe heals. So when I have these thoughts, these addictive thoughts, these negative thoughts, what are some of the things that you use just really quick practical tools that you use. I know affirmations work really well for you. Affirmations are great for me. You know, we talk about all the time, just spot it, like spot the thought. <laughs> so that's not real. Mm. There's a, that I need to compete with this big uh, uh, GMC truck next to me on the highway. <laughs> Fuck this guy. He's probably a small penis. He's got a big truck. Y yes, I'm, yeah. I'm gonna, I'll be faster than him. I'll cut him off. Those are just thoughts in my head. Like, so what I've done with that is when I have that thought, I have to pray for them and love them. Perfect. So like try to because I want to alchemize spiritually alchemize it. So yes. I have to be like, okay, that was fucked up, Jason. Let's let's okay, okay, stupid Bill. You know, I'm st my brain still fights it. Yeah, like, yeah. I, I hope you and your family are safe. I hope you have an amazing day. You know, I hope that powerful, you powerful. And then even my ego will be like, well, I hope you'll become spiritual. 
<laughs> if you become big diesel if truck. you become spiritual as me, <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't yeah, be driving yeah. that way. <laughs> Even my prayers are like the Pharisee and Sadducees with Jesus. You know, he can. It's like he, they were like, I thank God they're not like me. You know? Yeah, <laughs> that's so funny, bro. Uh, so that's a great tool. One, one of the prayers that I really like is God give them everything I've ever wanted. Mm, give that's them, a good one. Give them health, happiness, and prosperity. Try fucking doing that with someone you're mad at instead of wishing they were different. That's magic words, bro. Give magic them words. everything I've ever wanted. Give them health, happiness, and prosperity. That's a heavy duty one. That's like that's like okay, I really need some. That's spiritual hat alchemy. Here. That's the, like the other, wizard shit, right yeah, there. That's what, yeah, that's yeah. And then the well, good goal is two weeks. Like try and do that for two fucking weeks and see if you still feel the same way. <laughs> uh, another nice one, and obviously these are just prayers or mantras. As God fill my heart with forgiveness. God fill my heart with forgiveness. God fill my heart. I need to forgive this person for not being the way I think they should be. <laughs> and the, com the comedy helps me release my grip a little bit. Another nice one is God, um, uh, 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 God help me see the truth. God help me not judge. God help me see. Th if I'm seeing the truth in the present moment, mm -hmm. they're just at where they're at in their own evolution. And yeah, maybe, and I'm not perfect. And it maybe, I'm not God. Yeah, no. So it's may, I was where they were once for sure. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I was in the gutter bleeding. And they may have conquered things that I'm still working right. on. Right. Totally. We don't know. We don't yeah. know how hard their struggle has been. Uh, we had this talk at the gym yesterday. I was in, I'm in the gutter bleeding. That's where I come from with my alcoholism. But I still Literally, wanna, like, I still want to judge yeah. everybody's shoes as they're walking <laughs> by. You know what I mean? I'm like, remember where you came from, bro? Like you're a, you're a gutter drunk. Like, <laughs> well, it's so funny because it's like we in these moments of the, of human interactions that we have. There's this whole idea of us wanting to put ourselves above on a pedestal. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's the king. It, it's it's the insecure king. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, which is the spirit of king, but it's it's that insecurity that rolls out. That allows us, like with Joffrey, we we're talking about in Game of Thrones, where I need to be cruel. I need to do practical jokes on you. Yeah, I'm gonna be cruel, and then I'll be like, ha ha ha. It was just like oh, it, was a joke. It, was, it was a joke, or or I'm gonna have sarcasm and be super mean and cruel and pinpoint to hopefully get my point across. But then I'm gonna try to make it so that it's not so intense. Yes, you know, it's always that. Well, I use my tongue as a lash. It's like I, I'll I'm gonna beat you up, but just with my with my tongue. Mm -hmm. like I'm just gonna say stuff. We could, the what's the song they say? Razor blade perceptions that cut too deep. <laughs> it's like yeah, yeah, I probably should have kept my mouth shut. That's, but, and as an that's addict, a good those one are, for us. That's yes. a good one. God help me keep my fucking mouth shut. Yeah, that's a great affirmation. Pray, I use that a lot. Me too. Pray that. I didn't for use while. that Sunday, but I use it a lot. Let's use another very practical. This one has saved my ass, bro. I did this for years, and I did this nightly. So upon awakening, you have your alignment with source, right? Prayer, meditation, something to get you in connection with the present moment, with the quantum, with God. And then we have in the evening, we have, a, oh, at the, in the, the, the night. What about the night? So for years, I don't do this now, but I did do it for years to ingrain it into my mind. We do a nightly inventory. This mm. is not like a new thing. Like yes. Dwayne didn't come up with this. This has been spiritual practice for thousands of years. Everyone has their own uh, approach to it. The way that I was taught was you write down two negative things and one positive thing. So two things that are kicking my fucking ass. And it was the same for eight years. I wrote the same two things for eight years. So women and money. Yeah. <laughs> kicking my fucking ass. So I would write down relationship. First, number one, relationship. Right now I'm getting now I'm getting really clear, black and white, with a pen and paper and Physical inventory. So I'm physically writing it down. So I write down, first thing is eating my lunch, my relationships, or women, say romantic relationships. Mm -hmm. And then immediately after, I bring in the appropriate power on paper. God, shine your light on this situation. So I'm no longer asking to get my way, and I'm turning this thing that's kicking my ass into a prayer. And I'm helping to build a relationship with the power that creates worlds. Mm, that's so good. If I'm interested in setting up daily practices that's supposed to help me beat my addiction, why not tap into the most powerful thing there is? Why not build a relationship mm -hmm. with the most powerful thing? I walk around with the solution, bro, 
in my back pocket. I always have access to that. Like I'm walking around. I am the solution. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm connected to it. So first thing, kicking my ass. Sec it, immediately bring in the appropriate power. What's the second thing? Money. I'm afraid. I have financial insecurity. Oh my God. Spinach is five fucking dollars now at the store. I can't spend that much on spinach. We talk about this all the time. Mm -hmm. Immediately. So I write it down. Financial fear. Immediately after, God grant me strength to do your will. So I'm, I'm alchemizing it. I'm turning that thing that's kicking my ass into a prayer. I'm asking the appropriate power for help. I'm not trying to force Dwayne's will with my money now. I'm trying to just have, I'm trying to ask the appropriate power for strength. Mm. I'm not trying to get a particular way. I'm not turning God into Santa Claus. Just please do it my way, God. You know, two, two, two billion would be right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then I would be okay. And then I'll be okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not, it's not Santa Claus deal. It's just building a relationship with something that can actually solve my problem. And then, you know, if I asked you to inventory a grocery store, would you just give me a list of the bad shit? Or would you tell me everything you have on the shelf? Right. So we can't forget about the good shit too. So number three is bring in a positive. I'm sober today. Mm, Boom. That's good, yeah. And then bring in the appropriate power. Thank you, God, for this opportunity. Well, our, our material here talks about like even writing down when you were caring. Yes, you have to include it, the good. As an addict, it's, it's, have to, pre it's a pretty high bar to actually care for something. Besides yourself, <laughs> what's a that? dog. Yeah, what's that? I don't know what that. Maybe even I looks can't like. care for humans, but I can care for a dog. You know, or like, <laughs> sure. I, mean, I did that for years. I was like cruel to everybody else, but love my dog. <laughs> you know, it's crazy. This is so interesting. Like when you were talking about the money, I got to share this. With you. This, you have to the thoughts, words, and actions. You, ha it's so cool to catch yourself behaving badly in an action. Let me tell you, money one with the. So I bought Walmart avocados and bought Costco avocados. Oh, yeah. I and I compared yeah, the yeah. price. So I was like, I need to take the pit out of both of these. So I, I cut a Walmart one that was smaller, mm -hmm. and I cut a Costco one that was bigger. So then I compared the prices, and then I weighed them. And then I was trying to figure out the math <laughs> of the weight and then the difference in price. And I stopped myself. I was like, what the fuck what are, are you, you doing? doing? <laughs> I could go to my bank account. You know, Thank God I've been like successful. I could buy an avocado farm right. in Mexico. Yeah. And I can't buy one here, but I could buy one in Mexico, you know? Yeah. It's like, this is the dumbest shit ever. Yeah. Let like, me remove the I'm, seed. I'm literally like, <laughs> I got to weigh this because I need to know where store I should go to. Very good. Yeah. To save some grams. That's Karen <laughs> down the rabbit hole with a gerbil perspective. I walked away from it in disgust. I was like, "Good for you, Jason!" Like, this is the old you. But that's like, it. Go that, away. That like, is a spiritual practice. It, you yes, spotted yes, it. You yeah. caught it. You caught yeah. it. It would have been worse if you just kept going, and then you would have been talking to some manager at Walmart. Like, do you know what you're doing to me in my pocket? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you you caught it. That's the art of spirituality. Is catching ourselves when we fall off the beam. Yes. Being willing to make the appropriate correction and not giving ourselves a hard time about it. Mm -hmm. It's like, man, you really fucked that up, Dwayne. And I beat myself up for weeks. Yeah. I mean, I was going like in my head, like these avocados are smaller. And then I was like, you know, they weigh them with those green bags. And I was like, the label and the bags have gotten thicker. <laughs> so the weight on the, it's like, I want to weigh like the bag the and label. the label. <laughs> because I know it weighs way more than what they used to. Because it used to be thinner. Bro, that's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> that's how my mind goes. It yes. starts thinking. Now, Very that normal. helps me in business when I'm looking at Excel sheets and stuff like that. I can alchemize yes. my... And that's what I want people to understand. You can. You need to spiritually alchemize your addiction. It, your, your things are not bad. Because I think a lot of people think they need to press things down. You know, like an espresso with the coffee, you got to press it down. Or you, you throw you the... You have to alchemize it and be it, let it be more free. Yes, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Yes. Like part of that is super good. Like a Lamborghini engine has to yes, be fucking yeah. precise. Don't don't make yourself a Toyota. Yeah, very good. I mean, you drive a Toyota, but <laughs> I drive a Mazda, so it's like they're I, all the same. Yeah, but I, I mean, it's like, Toyota. but I mean, we're, we're, if you're an addict, you're a Lamborghini. Like you're just wired that way. Yeah. Like I... I I don't mean to be You're high functioning and you need extra tension. <laughs> yeah. A hundred percent. So that's a very powerful and more maintenance. one, bro. You caught it. And then, you know, we, we talk about this a lot too, is give yourself an attaboy for catching it. Mm -hmm. It's like, I caught it. I caught my crazy thoughts. I didn't have to 
become the thought. But have you ever have you ever noticed with addicts too that the ones in the conspiracy theories, like I like, they're the ones in the politics. They get all emotional about it and go down rabbit holes. Oh yeah, it's all that same bullshit. Yeah, yeah, absolutely lost. It's just like feeding ego more and more, feeding my addiction more and more. Well, and I've lost the present moment. Yeah, I'm gonna drink coffee, smoke a cigarette, and stay up till four in the morning because. Fuck Biden or fuck Trump, you know? <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. And, and I'm not drinking, but I'm. <clears throat> and what's wrong with me is them. Yes, there you if go. They were it's different. The same. I would be okay because then I still have my victim mentality. I still have my enemy. So th- this says something, and I want you to talk about this because this is so good, and we'll um, close in this. It says it's easy to go on autopilot and lose sight of how our behavior aligns with our ideals. <laughs> <laughs> talk about like. Being in the shoes of inner being and alignment. You know, I, um, while the shoes of inner being feel very, very good, and so a nice rule of thumb for us, if I'm standing in the shoes of inner being, I should be feeling good. And then it's it's helpful for me to just imagine the vertical dimension right down my the middle of my body. Like it's an I'm in alignment and I'm I'm on the beam, I'm I'm with with the quantum and with God. And then it's also helpful for me to remind myself, well, inner being doesn't feel bad. So if I feel really good when I'm in the shoes of inner being, inner being's not capable of feeling bad. Mm-hmm. Inner being's not capable of feeling worried. Inner being is not capable of, of getting Tire, angry, t- tired. tired doesn't, weak. Like, like uh, 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 the realm of time, the idea of time or fatigue Mm-hmm. Or duration doesn't exist in not a with being. the higher self. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like that that doesn't exist in that realm. So if I'm starting to feel angry, or if I'm starting to get hungry, or if I'm starting to have three dimensional emotional feelings, it's helpful for me to remember. Okay, I'm not laser focused right now. I'm the worse and worse I feel, the further and further I'm getting. Mm-hmm. From the shoes of inner being. It's like a barometer. I did use your thing this morning and it worked great. I said, you know, I'm having some issues when I woke up this morning. She goes, what do you mean? I was like, I have two issues that I got to fix like right now. I said, I'm horny and I'm hungry. Yeah. So I was like, you can fix one right now (laughs) and then I'll fix the other one right after this. (laughs) And it worked, bro. (laughs) (laughs) I did that last night. (laughs) Yeah. So, so it's call, like horny, we, 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 it's horny. Uh, we, it's called the double H. Hangry. Yep, double H uh, halt. Horny, hungry, angry, lonely, tired. Horny, ang- uh, And those hungry, are easy to fix. Angry, lonely, tired. What those are are emotions. Mm-hmm. And if I'm experiencing those emotions, those are also perception alterers Mm -hmm. they can alter my perception of reality Mm -hmm. so i'm not no longer seeing the truth i'm no longer in the shoes of inner being i'm turning into a victim yeah i'm turning into who's my enemy i'm turning into get the fuck out of my way i need to get Mm -hmm. this 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 and this so it's very easy to just have some self-care yes take care of those things if you're lonely Start connecting with your friendships. Start creating new friendships. If you're tired, start resting more. Start Let your nervous system being relax. Super faithful and go to meetings. Absolutely, you'll have meet friends. You'll have a you'll have a brand new family immediately. Immediately, you'll have more people. Than That's you your problem. Keep track if you should. Of. If you're an addict and you're lonely. Go to a meeting. You have to go to a meeting. Yeah, like that's to, the next step. It's it's one of the most beautiful parts of those support groups is mm-hmm. because you're instantly welcomed. No if you, one if you don't tell have you, somebody that has some type of spiritual practice and have gone through it, been there and got the T-shirt, I mean, like you even talk about like some some people you you were your mentors were like people you normally wouldn't talk to on a daily basis. No, they're way. just so different, yeah, kind yeah. of like wild, maybe <laughs> older, whatever. But when you throw addiction in there, and it's like, and you get somebody that's gone past you, mm-hmm. and they've been there, done it, got the T-shirt, walked the miles with the bloody knees, oh, yeah. going up the stairs. Those type of people, you'll be surprised who becomes your friend and who doesn't. You know what I mean? It's a wild experience. Do not deprive yourself of that experience. I would have never hung out with the people that I was hanging out with if we didn't have a common issue and a common goal. And that that's what I want to leave people with when we close in this. And we're going to go to the next part on the second episode. What I want to make sure people, whether if you can't get out of your house and you're freaking out, do a Zoom meeting. There's yes, meetings for yes. free everywhere online. Start online and then find one closest to you. Take whatever energy you have. If you need to sleep all day to prepare yourself, prepare yourself to go to a meeting. 
Because the number one thing that you can do, we believe, is get into community. Absolutely. 